but it's had to have faith in it. The secret is to just it. infinity. Didn't know if it was wise to listen. Oh, what yeah. could it hurt to try? Yeah. 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 Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Raging Fury 55 bringing you guys a brand new video. And today I'll be teaching you guys how to edit to the beat. Uh, this is a topic where um, I've done more niche stuff like bullet syncing and all that sort of stuff, but I haven't actually made a, a general video about bullet syncing, not bullet syncing, but editing to the beat for a gaming montage. And it's one of those fundamentals where if you don't understand how to do it, you're gonna really struggle editing a montage. And I looked around, I couldn't find any sort of video like this. So I was like, hey, I'll make my own video. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So first we're gonna go over how to edit titles to the beat. And uh, this is a pretty easy one, but I just wanna go over it real quick and make sure you guys understand how to do it. Uh, so right here we have a cinematic. It's a pretty basic um, Halo 5 Guardians cinematic, which I got from a theater. And we'll play around with this cinematic. Anyway, right here we have a song called Clark's by Hey. Really good non-copyright song. But anyway, let's play this song real quick and uh, you guys can see where the beats are. All right, so I don't know if you heard of that, but basically there's a beat around every second and then we had one big beat right here. So for every small beat, like this one, right here we have one small beat. So we're gonna put a marker on it. And for every beat we find, we're gonna put a marker on it. And this is something where, if you are a more advanced editor, you don't need to put markers on it. Like I don't usually use markers 80% of the time, but if you are a beginner, it's gonna really help you out. Anyway, let's do all these markers real quick. So we have one more right there. So we're gonna add a marker there and uh, I'll get back to you guys when I have all the markers put down. All right, so I have all of our beats labeled and I'll just play it for you guys real quick to show you guys, you know, I put all the beats in the right places. And of course, you know, if you wanna follow along, uh, you can literally just download uh, the song and just use your own cinematic and it should work out pretty well. But yeah, let's play the song real quick yet again. And there we go. So we have all of our markers put on the beats and we have one last marker on the final beat. So now we gotta put down our title cards and we got our footage right here. I'm gonna delete this, we don't need the uh, background audio for the cinematic and first of all we're going to add our first title so we're going to go to edit and then we're going to click here and we're going to write quench gaming presents for our first title and uh right now i don't know if you can tell my computer is making a lot of noise i am working on this on my laptop i'm not at home right now so uh yeah just bear with the you know, background audio. There's nothing I can do about it. My computer just kind of dies when I edit on Adobe Premiere and use Streamlabs to record this stuff. But yeah, at least, you know, we're able to edit on Adobe Premiere without any lag issues. That's the last thing you want. Uh, anyway, I don't know if you saw that, but basically I put stroke on here. Uh, stroke is an effect, which is pretty useful. It just basically puts like an outline on the text and we'll actually increase that stroke a little bit. Uh, we'll center it. And then we go to graphics and we'll make sure the title card is in the middle of the screen. We'll make it a little bit bigger actually. We'll make it like a hundred. Yeah, that's good. Uh, center it again. We'll make the title have a little bit of a thicker stroke. We'll put on shadow around 11. And there we go. We got our first title card done. Uh, pretty good stuff. And now for every beat we have, we're gonna change the title. Um, it's, it's gonna be very visually pleasing to the audience when you do this. And uh, usually 
when you have shorter beats, you can't put too much for each title card or else you know the audience won't be able to read that title card or title. I don't know why I'm calling it a title card. I actually don't know the correct uh, terminology, but anyway, we're just gonna call it a title. Um, so yeah, for if you have shorter beats, make the title cards or make the title shorter. Um, that way your audience can fully read the titles and not get confused if you know you put a very long title for a very short beat or else your audience won't be able to read all of that uh, words. I'm, I feel like I'm talking really weird right now. But anyway, at each beat, we're gonna change the title. Um, so right here, we'll put a Halo 5 montage for the next title. And I don't know if you saw that, but when you use markers, it's way easier um, to cut where you need to cut. Uh, it'll literally, you know, drag your mouse to that exact point, which is really cool. Usually after, you know, I write a Halo 5 montage, you know, I'll write for the next title card or title, I'll write uh, edited by me and I'll write edited with, you know, Adobe Premiere, enjoy the video, blah, blah, blah. But this time we're gonna try something a little bit, you know, unique and hopefully it turns out pretty well. So I'm gonna write get ready in. And then for our next title card or our next title, I. I don't know why I'm saying title card. I don't think that's the right word. But anyway, we're gonna write five here. And I'm not sure this is gonna work, but we're just gonna roll with it and see if it actually works. Um, let me make the stroke a little bit thicker. There we go. Center that baby. And we're gonna increase the length of that title. And now we're gonna cut it, each one, like that. And we're gonna change it to four here change it to three here and I should be centering these probably uh, let's see hopefully it's fine there we go oh boy the lag is kicking in on my computer anyway uh, we're gonna write a two here anyway there we go so each beat we're changing the title and uh, let's play it out real quick or actually we need to cut this off because that is our main beat, and that is when you know your first person footage starts. So we'll put in a first person clip. Let's go to desktop and let's go to my clips. I got a clip right here we will use. There we go. Um, and we'll find where I got my first kill right there. Cut that off and uh, Let's lower the audio here, audio gain, and we'll subtract 10. And let's play it out and see how it looks. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I like that a lot. I think it looks really clean. It's a really simple effect or a very simple uh, editing to the beat sync, but uh, it's really effective and it makes the montage very visually appealing. But we can improve, we can improve on this. Uh, so let me show you what we're gonna do real quick. So I'm gonna cut here. So whenever we have a number title, we're gonna cut. And we're gonna cut here, here, and here. And now we are gonna play around with opacity. And if you guys don't know what opacity it is, it's basically, it controls how much of your, uh, you know, footage or title that you can see. And if you put it at like 100%, you can fully see the title. If you put it at 20%, you know, you're gonna only be barely able to see that title. Um, so we're gonna go to opacity here and we're gonna make it zero at first. Turn on that clock. And then we're going to go out a little bit. And then we're going to click 100. And then we'll drag it a little bit further. There we go. And just highlight all of these keyframes. Right click, click copy. Um, you can also do Command C or Control C. And that works as well. You want to copy your keyframes. And now we're just going to go to the first frame of each number title. And we're going to paste these keyframes and you can either right click paste or you can do command V or control V depending if you're using a Mac or a Windows computer 
Uh, Mac should be command and uh, Windows should be control. Uh, pretty simple stuff. Uh, hopefully you guys know that stuff already. That's pretty simple. Uh, go to two and then we're just gonna keep pasting these keyframes. Uh, there we go. And then now we have to do the same for our actual footage. So we're gonna do that real quick. So let's go to our actual footage. Uh, first of all, we need to turn on that clock, put it at zero. We're gonna look at our other uh, clip or our title to see where it exactly went back to 100% for our opacity. So it went to back to 100% right here. Uh, yes, there we go. So now we can basically make sure our opacity for our background footage and the title are changing at the same pace. Uh, so there we go. We got our opacity done. And if you didn't know, we're turning on the stopwatch. So we have a gradual opacity change and not a radical one. Boom, we're just gonna copy and paste all of these. And if you're wondering why I had to redo the keyframes for um, the background footage for opacity, it just doesn't copy and paste from the title keyframes. And you might be asking why, I have no idea, but yeah, we're just gonna deal with it. It's not a big issue. And there we go. We got it done. And one last thing, uh, this isn't a big deal, but I'ma just nest all of these clips right here. And I'ma put on some color on here. So I'm gonna change the color, I'm gonna change it down to 30 to make the background footage match the tone of the song. Uh, if that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. But anyway, let's play out this clip real quick and hopefully it looks good or the footage. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I think that looks really good. Um, really simple stuff, and uh, it's not a hard effect. Uh, there's nothing too complicated here. You might have to practice it a few times, especially if you're not used to keyframes, but overall, very simple effect. Editing titles to the beat isn't a hard uh, topic. It's a good introduction topic if you're trying to edit to the beat. And you know, when you do this, it makes your video a lot more visually appealing. So right before we go to the next topic, I just wanted to ask you guys a few questions. And if you're able to answer these questions, you're pretty good to go. Yeah, just answering these questions, just to make sure that you understand the material we just went over. Uh, so the first question is, what is a marker? And where do you put markers? Question number two is, what is opacity and how do we utilize opacity to our advantage? And number three, when do title cards change? Uh, if you understand all of those questions, you are on the right path and uh, yeah, you are on the path to greatness. Anyway, let's get to our next topic, which is editing cinematics to the beat. All right, so we're back and we have a couple of things to play with. So we have two cinematics right here and they're two separate cinematic clips. And then we also have a song right here, which is Thule Together, a uh, pretty good non-copyright song. Anyway, uh, first of all, we're gonna wanna start off with deleting these uh, baseline cinematic uh, audio. Uh, we don't need that, there's no point in keeping it. Uh, now, let's find where the beats are. All right, so I don't know if you heard that, but basically we had a snap at each, like every two seconds or so. So we're gonna use that to our advantage. That snap is basically our beat here. So right here, we had a beat right here we're gonna start out with. And I think we have some excess footage right here. So we're gonna take the first chunk out. Um, there we go. So we had a snap right here. So we're gonna put down a marker. And we have another snap right there. And basically, I'm not gonna go and find every single snap for this song because we're just gonna play around with the first few seconds. Uh, so I can just teach you the basics of how to change cinematics to the beat. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So the first way to change cinematics to the beat is just changing the footage. Um, like this. 
Oh, and we have excess footage, so we got to take that out. And right here, here to here, we don't have a lot of runway, or we don't have a lot of footage. So we're gonna just change it right here. And that's the better idea. So my idea here would be like, hey, so we have footage here to here, but we don't have a lot of time. So what I would do here most likely is start out putting out my title card at this beat or my title at this beat. And then I'll change the cinematic for this for right here. Uh, hopefully that makes sense because you know, right here to here, we have so little time. We can't put a title. We can't change the cinematic. We would just add a title here because um, right here to here, there's not enough time to really do anything. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. And uh, so let me just play it out real quick. This is a very simple cinematic change to the beat. So that's really simple. It's really easy to do, but the problem is, um, you know, if you do that over and over again, it's quite boring. So we have another solution. So I would cut here and I would cut roughly, you know, anywhere from five to 15 seconds. So we'll just do that. And we're gonna do the same for the clip right here. And I'm gonna just drag this away because I'm gonna show you guys two different types of changing cinematics you guys can do. The first one is just keeping it at the same cinematic but radically increasing the speed during the beat. So you click R on your keyboard, you get this little tool which helps you speed up or condense the clip. And we're gonna condense it into six frames. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're just gonna speed it up. And there we go. And bring that over there and let's play the clip. So I don't know about you, but I really like it when you radically increase the speed. Uh, when you have a beat, um, it just looks really nice in my opinion. And it looks a lot, uh, a little bit more complex than your simple just jump cut. Now the next thing we can do is basically, we're gonna reduce this by half by using our R tool and condense it even further. Bring our other clip in increase that portion we cut also into three frames bring it into here and we're going to have our second clip replace the first clip and you might be asking what we're doing right now and what we're basically doing is basically using this radical speed jump to kind of like a transition into the next clip and let's just play it out real quick and that looks really clean. Uh, if you want a slightly better or a smoother effect, uh, check out my tutorial down in the description, my Ease In, Ease Out tutorial for Adobe Premiere, and you can make the effect look a little bit more cleaner. But yeah, that's basically it for this effect. It's pretty simple. Just you know, use the R tool, click R on your keyboard, uh, condense a lot of footage um, into a few frames, and it's gonna look really good. And right before we move on to the next topic, I just wanna remind you guys, when you're using this effect, just remember, you need quite a bit of runway footage. And what I mean by that is like, you know, if your clip is only three seconds, this effect is not gonna work because you need around, you know, at least five seconds um, to speed up in order for this effect to work. So, you know, just make sure you have enough runway footage for this effect to work. You know, if your clip is like at least 15 to 20 seconds, you should be good to go. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And right before we, we move on to the next topic, I want to ask you guys a few questions. So my first question is, what is the R tool? Uh, number two, why do we need excess cinematic footage when using the R tool? Number three, when do we change cinematic clips? And number four, do we need to change to a different cinematic clip for each beat? And if you're able to answer all those questions, you're looking pretty good to be honest. And uh, this is a pretty simple uh, section. Our next two sections will be a little bit more difficult, so just bear, uh, hopefully, if you can solve this section, you're on the right path, I'll say that much. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys understand that. And let's move on to our next section, which is editing to drop slash climax beats. All right, here we are in our third section of the video, and this is how to edit to drop slash climax beats. So let's get right into it. So I have a first person clip right here. 
of me playing Halo 5. And I also have a clip right here, or not a clip, a audio clip of a song called Echoes, I'm pretty sure. And Echoes has a really good climax beat we're gonna play with. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So, and after we'll go over drop beats real quick. Drop beats is a pretty quick topic. Climax is like the hardest one. But anyway, let's play the song real quick and let's find where our uh, climax beat is. So we have our climax beat right here, and then we have some extra beats right here we can play around with as well. So usually when you're when you have a climax beat, you want to have your really cool kill right there. So I'm gonna just find a good kill in this feed real quick. Let me just mute these so I don't ear rape you guys by audio scrubbing. Uh, let's find a good kill. So we're gonna cut here. So basically there's a period before the climax where the audio kind of just goes down a little bit. And we're gonna use that to our advantage and you'll see why. So we'll put a marker of where that happens. So I think it's around right here. So we'll put a marker right there. Right when the audio starts to go lower, uh, we're gonna slow down the clip. So we're gonna basically slow down the clip to right before he shoots, so we're gonna clip right here. And we're gonna use the R tool right here, and instead of uh, condensing the clip, we're gonna expand it a little bit and make it slower. So right there, we expanded it, and we're gonna turn on optical flow real quick. So speed slash duration, and turn on optical flow. There we go. And I need to get some water. <laughs> so there we go, we turn on optical flow. And if you don't know what optical flow is, it basically makes extra frames uh, when you slow down the clip and it makes the clip look a lot more smooth uh, when you slow down the clip. Anyway, so we turn on optical flow. Uh, hopefully it's gonna look okay. And uh, we're gonna bring the clip here. And on top of that, we are gonna nest a clip here. So we're gonna right click, nest, and you might be wondering why are we nesting the clip here? And it's because when you put extra effects on a optical flow clip, uh, basically the, the optical flow is not gonna render if you put extra effects on there. So you gotta nest the clip first for the optical flow to work. Uh, hopefully you guys understand that. Um, it's a topic that I don't understand it either. I don't understand why you have to nest for the effect to work or for the optical flow to work, but you know, I just do it. So we're gonna have the baseline crop at 6.6%. So we're gonna slap on crop. And usually a montage has a baseline crop to make it look a little bit more cinematic. So boom, there we go. Uh, so if we go back here, we have a little bit of a, you know, cinematic bars, which looks really nice. We go here now, and we're gonna have to crop at 6.6% .6 again but there's gonna be a twist. So now we have our crop and we're gonna click the time watches and instead of having it constantly at 6.6%, we're gonna increase the crop as the clip goes on. And there's two ways of doing this. I'm gonna show you guys two ways. Uh, the first way is just have a continuous increase of crop. So by the very end, we're gonna have a really, uh, we're gonna have a lot of crop. It's gonna be like 25%. And the reason why we need to have these time clocks on yet again is because we want to have that crop constantly changing and not have a radical change of 25%. So there we go. Uh, it is increasing, increasing. And then right here, when that beat hits, we want that crop to go back to normal. So we're going to have it at 25% at first, 25, 25. Turn on your clocks or your stopwatches and then go out around six frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then change it back to our normal 6.6%. 6 
whenever I put crops in a montage or whenever I use cinematic bars in a montage, I used to use 10% for top and bottom. Now I use 6.6%. Uh, is user's preference. Uh, you can play around with it a little bit. But yeah, that's not the main point of this effect. All right, so let's render this out real quick and we'll see how it actually looks. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I like that. I think it looks really cool, but we can make it better. And first of all, we're gonna add a lighting effect right here. And lighting effects are really cool. They're really easy to play with once you get to know them. And first for your lighting effect, you're gonna to have to use an adjustment layer. And if you don't know why, uh, basically, when you're using a lighting effect, you need to change the opacity of it. And if you put on the main clip, you can't really change the opacity of the lighting. So right here, we're gonna slap on lighting effect. And we are going to change it from spotlight to omni. We're gonna increase the major radius a little bit and we're going to increase the intensity. Boom. And we're going to put a slight tinge to the light. So we're going to put a slight red. You can do any color, but I like red a little bit better. And usually, you know, there's usually a specific color which matches to the song, which might sound kind of weird, but when you have a little bit of experience editing, you'll see that, but don't worry about that. Uh, and then now we need to change the opacity of the clip. So you, you want to start out with zero first and then turn on the stopwatch and then go around five frames in. So one, two, three, four, five, change it to a hundred. And then you're gonna go out about <clears throat> around, you know, two seconds and go to change it to around 40. And we wanna keep a little bit of that lighting effect to linger. Uh, you don't have to do this. You can change it to zero if you want to. It's user's preference, but I like uh, having that lighting effect linger for a little bit. But anyway, now let's render that out and we'll see how it looks. All right, so I don't know about you, but I really like that bright flash um, with the lighting effect. And we can actually make it a little bit stronger. I think we should make it a little bit stronger. So we're gonna go here. Uh, we'll make it a little bit stronger. So boom, and just a little bit stronger, and then we'll just re-render it and we'll see how it looks. And you know, when you're playing around with like lighting effects, there's no true good number. And you're going to play around with it for each montage and just see what fits with the clip and the song. Anyway, hopefully this renders pretty quickly and I can show you a better version of this lighting effect. There we go. I like that a lot better. You had a much brighter flash and it really emphasizes how strong the beat is of the song and there we go that's pretty much how to edit a climax beat and before we go to drop beat i just want to go over a precursor climax beats and these are just beats before the climax so if we play it right here So I don't know if you could hear that, but around five to seven seconds before the climax beat, we had a lot of these like really quick beats, which are precursor climax beats. And what we can do here is we can just do really simple black flashes. So we're gonna find each climax beat. So right here we have our first set of precursor climax beats, and then right here, uh, we have the second set. And the difference is right here, the beats are a little bit further apart. And then at the second set of precursor climax beats, those beats are much closer together. And uh, hopefully I'm talking okay right now. I've just been talking so much today. And uh, you know, I actually recorded this video a little bit earlier and it failed. It literally failed. Um, my recording software like crashed and I was unable to retrieve the footage. So I'm redoing it again, but you know, hopefully I'm doing an okay job commentating. You know, I just want to teach you guys how to edit gaming montages, but as you can see for the first set of um, precursor climax beats, I'm basically cutting every three frames like this. And we're going to do that until we get to the second set of precursor climax beats. So I'll get back to you guys 
once I've cut the first set of precursor climax beads. So there we go, we have everything cut out pretty evenly. We cut every three frames and now what we're gonna do is just delete every other one. And this is just gonna create a black flash effect, which is super simple, but you know, I like using it once in a while and I think it fits here. And we don't need this effect, but um, you know, it's definitely based on the user's preference, but you know, I like putting black flashes here. It's definitely not a requirement for this song, but you know, we're just gonna, I just want to show you guys how to do black flashes. So just deleting every other one. And there we go. So we'll just play it real quick and you guys can see how it looks like. And then right here, I'm going to actually delete these audios right here and delete the one right here. And we're just going to keep the audio. So you click option, hold on option, uh, and then, not R, what am I doing? And then now we just increase it. And we'll see how that looks. And then right here, we're gonna change the flashes to every two frames. So every two, we're gonna cut. So cut here, one, two, cut, one, two, cut, one, two, cut. And because the beats are closer together is why we're cutting more often and making those flashes a little bit more, uh, they're happening a little bit more often. There's probably a better word of explaining it, but hopefully you guys get the gist of what I'm saying. So it's cutting every other frame. Boom, boom, boom. And I'll just get back to you guys once I'm done. All right, there we go, we cut everything, and now we're just gonna do the same process and just start deleting uh, parts. So delete here, delete here, delete here, delete here, and just do it for every other one. And remember, you wanna, usually I like keeping the audio constant, so we're gonna delete these chopped out audios. Uh, hold on option. delete these and then use your, uh, you know, just your regular mouse tool to increase the speed again. So boom. And there we go. And hopefully this looks pretty good and let's play it out. And one last thing we can do here, we can actually change this a little bit. And we're just gonna do a cross dissolve here. Cross dissolve. And because we have, you know, a different, we have a lower tone uh, to the beat or a lower tone of the song, we're actually gonna change the color of the clip. So we're gonna go here and hopefully I can stop lagging. Uh, we're gonna go to color and we're gonna change the color or the, we're gonna change the saturation down to 30. And boom, there we go. And we're gonna click render and we're gonna see how this looks. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I think that looked pretty solid. Um, black flashes, I don't really use too often now. I just don't like the look of it, but I know a lot of other people like using them. So I just covered that topic. And uh, real quick, let's go over drop beats. This isn't a hard topic and uh, drop beats are just different. Uh, they're bigger beats, but not the climax beat. So for example, uh, we can pull back the song uh, Clark's Hay, put that back in the timeline. Right here, this is a drop beat right here. Right here, we can just pull in a clip, uh, just a random clip. We actually reuse the same clip actually. And uh, and then we can have some cinematic footage beforehand just to give a little bit of contrast. So I'm gonna pull in a cinematic clip real quick. Uh, put that baby in. There we go. And delete this. 
And we're gonna go over two quick effects real quick for drop beats. We're not gonna go too in depth about this. So right here, we got you know, our first kill right here. And what we're gonna do is add a ramp effect. So we're gonna to go to ramp, or we go to editing, go to our effects, go to ramp, slap on ramp, and then change it to black. Blend to original. Uh, we actually don't need, just keep it at zero at first, and then go in about half a second. So around here, we're gonna change it to 100, and we'll see how that looks. So basically this black drop is giving that beat a little bit more contrast, or is a good complement to that beat. Hopefully that makes sense. It's not a very complicated effect. And also real quick, uh, we'll go over the white flash. So white flash, you turn everything to white and uh, make sure you're on the first frame. Change blend to original to 30 and then go out roughly a second. And we need to delete this keyframe right here. We don't need that. Go out roughly, you know, a second to a second and a half. So we'll go right here and we'll change it to a hundred percent to blend with original and let's just play that out real quick so my go-to for these drop beats effects is just to slap on a ramp and turn on that white flash i think that looks really nice and uh, i've used it for a lot of my montages so yeah that's pretty much it for this section um i know i rushed drop beats a little bit but considering we went over climax beats quite a long time i just wanted to you know end this section pretty quickly before you know i just rambled on for too long so before we go to the next topic i want to ask you guys a few questions uh what is a drop slash climax beat uh, what are precursor climax beats what is lighting effects and its purpose and what is the crop tool and why is it keyframes before the climax beat for some montages and what is the ramp effect and how do we use it so if you're able to answer those questions, you're doing really well. I think this is actually the hardest uh, section out of all the sections for this video. And uh, yeah, let's go into our final section, which is bullet sinking to the beat. All right, so we're in our final topic, which is bullet sinking to the beat. And uh, I actually made a couple more in-depth tutorials about this. So if you want more than this introduction course, I'll definitely go down in the description, check out those videos. Uh, they've helped a lot of people, but anyway, let's get right into it So first of all, we want to cut whenever I shoot my gun and You can actually keep it uncut, but I like cutting the footage. It just makes it a lot more clean But anyway, let's find each moment where I shoot my pistol So right here I shoot I shoot again right here So we're gonna cut right before I shoot so we cut right there I shoot right there. And I'm getting a lot of headshots right here, I just realized. But anyway, um, I shoot right here, right here, and right here. And we're using the same song, Echoes. I'm actually playing on the same timeline. But anyway, let's now put markers on each beat of the song. So we have a beat right here, one beat here, one beat here, one beat here, a beat here, and one right here. So now we have all our markers laid out and basically for each marker, we wanna start out with a new uh, bullet. So right here, we're gonna actually increase the amount of room we have. And for each clip we have, we're gonna to have to turn on time remapping speed. So there we go, we turned it on for those two. And as I said, this is gonna be a very introductory course and uh, if you want to check out, you know, a more in-depth tutorial about bullet syncing, I would definitely go down to the description. But, you know, 
if you listen to this, you'll get the basics down. But anyway, so right here we have another beat. So we need to have another bullet. So right here, we're going to have to increase the speed actually. And we're going to increase it quite a bit. And we're just going to do this. And there we go. And what I did right there was I forgot to explain, but basically I hold on to command on my keyboard. I clicked or control if you're on Windows, but basically I hold it on command slash control and I clicked in the middle of the clip and had this little blue marker appear, which basically separates the speed of this part of the clip and this part. So like because I increase I decrease the speed down here to 70%. But this part is still 100% because of this marker. And you can also drag out this marker to have a more gradual decrease of speed from 100 to 70. So right here, um, we actually have a perfect fit. We almost have a perfect fit, but we want to give some contrast to the clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to command. I'm actually going to increase right here and decrease right here and do that. And we're gonna go to the next clip. And this one's actually a little bit too fast. So we're just gonna have to increase the speed in general. So increase the speed to like 200 and go out just a little bit. There we go. And uh, basically we're doing these ramps to make it flow a little bit better. And uh, we have one more beat right here. And usually, Usually the beats are gonna be a little bit further apart. So like it'll be out like here and what you would do is you know Instead of increasing the speed you would decrease so you decrease it a lot and then you increase the ramp until it matches to the marker But it, that is not the case here. This usually doesn't happen uh, Usually you don't have to increase the speed of each bullet, but that's just what we have to work with today So right here we're gonna do the same thing and because you know, it's almost a perfect fit We're just gonna have to make that marker and then increase the speed here and decrease it right here and then do that. Oh shit. And we're gonna go here and we have our final clip right there. And then we're gonna turn optical flow and I already actually have it on. But yeah, there we go. And we're just gonna cut this portion out right here because we don't wanna render anything which is unnecessary. And uh, yeah, let's look at how it turned out. And remember, optical flow is used whenever you have a clip which is slowed down and you want to fill in those extra frames that was uh, basically extended. So you want to, if you want to have a constant 60 FPS clip but you slow down the clip, you would turn on optical flow. And now let's see how this played out. And let me turn on the audio real quick. And there we go. That wasn't the best bullet sync, but I think it actually looks pretty decent in my opinion. And remember, usually when you're bullet syncing, you're gonna decrease that second half of the clip or decrease the speed of the second half of the clip. That's usually how it works. It just happened here, we increase the speed of it. But yeah, it looks fine. And uh, last thing, if you want your bullet syncing to look really good, I would actually take out the audio for the clip and I would redo the audio. So you would find the audio pack for the game you're uh, editing so like I'm playing Halo 5 Guardians, so I would find the Halo 5 Guardians audio pack and re-put in the bullet sounds and the multi-kill sounds, and it makes it look a whole lot cleaner. But yeah, I know I rushed through that really quickly just because, you know, this video is getting really long and I just don't want to keep you guys waiting. But remember, if you want extra help on bullet syncing, just go down to the description and I have extra videos on bullet syncing. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And right before we wrap up, I want to talk about a few bullet singing questions. Uh, number one, what is time remapping? Number two, why do we gradually decrease slash increase the speed of the clip? Number three, why is optical flow used? And number four, how do you master bullet syncing? And actually, I forgot to talk about this last question, so I'll just answer it for you guys right now. You master bullet syncing just by, you know, practicing a lot. If you practice a lot, it'll just get very natural. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, bullet singing to the beat there for you. Remember, I rushed through this topic a lot. So if you're unable to answer these questions, I would definitely go to my other videos down in the description, check those out. And if 
you should be able to answer those questions um, after watching those videos for sure. Additionally, if you're able to answer those questions now, you are on the right path to success. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I recorded this video twice now because my Streamlabs uh, recording software messed up earlier. So my voice is really tired. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this helps you out a lot. And uh, yeah, remember practice, practice, practice. Even, you know, besides bullet singing to the beat, all these sections, you wanna practice and you'll get the hang of it. But yeah, if you have any more Adobe Premiere tutorials you want me to cover, leave it down in the comments. I can definitely do it for you guys or topics. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.